Enemy encounter. You must be destroyed. Incorrect. It is you who shall be destroyed. You must be defective, for you cannot foresee your own destruction. Your CPU is as inaccurate as you are incompetent and must be destroyed. Curse you. Your ability to evade is matched only by your cowardice. Your audio communicator is too active and must be silenced and or destroyed. You are my greatest enemy and my greatest friend. Wait, what? Uh, nothing. I mean, destroy! 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 That was a little bit of Murgazers, a pet project from a company called Free Lives. You'll be seeing some more of that when we chat to them here at the 2016 Electronic and Gaming Expo held at the CTICC on the last weekend of July. There were many exhibits on display and we spoke to one of the fellows at the ASUS stand. Or was that ASUS stand? No, ASUS stand. Well, we're in front of you on the ASUS stand and we're going to talk to Martin. He's going to explain us a little bit more what ASUS has to offer. Martin, we've got a huge machine here and I'm going to you tell us a bit more about this machine. Okay, so basically this machine, it was asked, I was asked by ASUS to build it. Um, it's based on the new Dishonored 2 game that we'll be launching and the whole idea behind it is that we're trying to promote modding in South Africa and show people what can be done and also obviously promote the game that's coming up. So this specific build, we've got a custom paint work, so that starts off with texture paste, going into undercoat, overcoat and then finally a dry brush. We've got full water cooling using copper tubing, just to give you an idea. Um, on top of that, we also have custom sleeving in the case, so the whole idea is you can match the sleeving to your build theme. really brings everything out. Motherboard tray has been rotated, so it's something really special. On the other side, there was another machine. You said the theme is Fallout 4? Yeah, so basically this PC was actually done last year, it was released for the Fallout 4 hype. So this is built using a Pip-Boy, there was a Fallout 4 Pip-Boy edition that came out, the came with all Pip-Boy arm piece. So we decided to use that case and basically build a mini ITX computer into it. And obviously wanting to water cool it, you have the problem of where does the radiator go. So we took the old ammo crate and basically built the radiator and power supply into it. Reservoirs on the outside is meant to almost symbolize the, um, what's it, the water purification part in Fallout 3. So that's all idea, liquid screen to show radioactive liquid and so on. So yeah, similar process, custom sleeve cables, custom paint job. But this is a complete scratch ball versus the Dishonored, which is the case one. There seems to be a bit of a crowd gathering here at this exhibit. Let's see what the commotion is about. We have got Matt here from Rowcode, and he and his team is the developer of Vala, Vicious Attack Llama Apocalypse. This is in fact a documentary about the tragic tale of the city being run over by zombie-like llamas, and um, hopefully Matt can explain to more of us about that scenario. Um, where did they come from? So, they're not zombie llamas, they're rabbit llamas. Oh, that's even worse. Firstly. No. Um, they are... Um, they kind of took over society, and as llamas do, I mean, it's, it's a pretty, pretty worrying real-world threat. So, they've taken over society, and you're kind of the last stand, you're the last hope for, for mankind. And um, a private military force sends in these mechs so you you're actually not walking around um, around the city you're remotely controlling mechs uh, and you can carry on sending mech after mech um, trying to clear the entire city of uh, of these rabid llamas so it can be inhabitable again okay. so you're sitting back at home base and and these drone mechs are doing the business for you 
and I see there's actually quite a variety of weapons available to protect the citizens against um, the rabid llamas. We've, we've got 35 or something, I lose count. We've got a lot of weapons and a lot of perks and a lot of things that kill you. Pretty much everything kills you. Um, <laughs> and there's some things that help you kill other things. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I see you can have um, four commanders on at the same time on a, on a single um, console, control console. Um, will it also be supporting online capability? So, no. Right now we have no plans to do online multiplayer as nice as it would be. Uh, we very specifically tried to make it a very awesome couch co-op experience for up to four players. Yeah, there's not enough of that going around anymore. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm a massive Crimson Land fan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, me and friends just used to play it for hours and hours and hours. So th this is kind of um, my perfect game that I can have a beer with friends and just relax and play. The, the origins of the, of the rabbit llamas, was it scientific experimentation? Was it a natural mutation? Was it just a curse from unknown country? I'll, I'll let you play the game when we release it to find that out. Okay, and we can find it on Xbox Live and on the Steam platform eventually. Yeah, it'll be on Xbox One and then Steam and the Windows Store. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> well, now there's something to add to your wish list. We hope the crew of Drogue Code experienced good fortune on the gaming endeavor, and there was actually quite a few developers showing their titles. We eventually ran into these guys from Free Lives as well. Hello, we've got Basil here from Free Lives, and Free Lives is a company that has brought you us such wonderful games such as Broforce. You can see Broforce here at the backside backdrop, and if you look to a bit to your left, you'll see Broforce in action as well. Um, Basil, besides Broforce, it's just Free Lives isn't just a one one game company, right? They do other things as well. Definitely not. Um, so Broforce was like our claim to fame and kind of still is with regular updates yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're looking at really experimenting with more games that uh, that we're each inspired by like as in individuals yeah, yeah. Um, and one of those is actually uh, Mergazerds which um, uh, the lead programmer Ruan Rothman yeah. he's been working on for probably about a year or so and yeah, it's, it's just come a long way from where it was before. Um, you just mentioned updates on Bro as well. The latest one, if I recall correctly, was um, Tank Girl or Tank Bro. Tank Bro. Tank Bro. Yeah. And what was the other character as well? Um, there was Dirty Brory. And oh, then, Dirty Harry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, Bro Lee. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you get any, any um, huge amounts of, of, of um, community feedback regarding the new additions? Brosley was the number one re requested bro of all time, basically. I, I would like to say all time, uh, but we'll, we'll we'll see what the what the actual polls say. Um, but he also really helped us coming into the game because we had a drinking game, and every time Brosley was mentioned, we had to have a shot of straw rum. Yeah. And so we we almost we were worried that we were becoming alcoholics. So, so we stopped that, mm -hmm. and we just added Bro Broly, and now everything is okay. Very cool stuff. Well, we're gonna have a quick look here at um, Mergazords. <laughs> yeah, Mergazords. Um, can you please explain a little bit as well? Let's have a look here. So, with Mergazords, Mergazords. Mergazords. <laughs> Mergazords. Mergazords. Yeah, there we go. There Commence we go. battle. <laughs> um, what inspired Mergazords? Um, that's a really great question. I, I, I would I would say like from, from Ruan's side, mm -hmm. um, it would have to be like Power Rangers, Cross Transformers, but then also just just how ridiculous those shows were. Yeah. And and the way everything just exploded at the end and and how gangly these things were and why they didn't just fall over all the time. Yeah. So Ruan kind of made that and uh, Jonathan Hayun helped with the, the art style itself mm -hmm. and now it is where it is now. Okay, cool. yeah, because I'm going to look forward for that one, I'm going to keep my eye out on that. Yeah. And um, thank you very much for talking to us. Um, we'll be putting free lives on it of course in the description below of the video. And um, 
Of course, we can also find your, your titles on the Steam platform as well. Yes, uh, Broforce is on the Steam platform. Um, actually, look out for Genital Jousting, which will be coming pretty soon to Steam, probably within the next six months. I saw that one. Yeah, yeah. I saw that one. Um, I couldn't put it in this video. <laughs> but I, I saw that one. That was, that was, was that from the straw rum? Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I was hoping to catch up with the guys at Wish Studio Games and see how they were doing, but the booth was mysteriously empty. It seems making fun of the government may not be the best cause for self-preservation. Not to worry, Westwood Studios. Your sacrifice will always be remembered. But wait, what's this? If, if you look closely, you will see that this is in the shape of a llama's head. And this guy was taken over by a llama. And this guy as well. And if you look here at the booth numbers, if you subtract 5 with one of the 2's, you get 3. And the booth floor space is made out of three triangles as well. This can only mean one thing. The Illuminati. It exists. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. That was just a little conspiracy theory joke. Or was it? Hey, look, someone to talk to. Right, we at the Frontosa stand. And next to me, I've got Christo. And he's going to be telling us more about what products they have on offer for us. Christo? What's the main thing you want to offer our customers at today? Well, we do have a wide range of products here, but what we're focusing on is Corsair. <coughs> Corsair? Yeah, Corsair. they got the best range of cases, keyboards, uh, headsets, everything from RGB to master cooling, okay. everything. they got the coolest cases, you can fit every motherboard in there. All the gamers, uh, yeah. they actually got sponsored this year by, uh, by Corsair. So all the gamers choose Corsair. So if you're a gamer, or even if you are an enthusiast, they cater for everyone. So, okay. so if, if you want to build up the core of a machine, you go for Corsair. If you want cool machines, you go for Cooler Master. No, <laughs> it's in the name, but Corsair is the coolest. Corsair is the coolest, okay. Uh, Temperature-wise. Temperature-wise, okay. And um, I see you've also got a couple of screens um, on display here. Um, we've been at the Asus stand a little while back and they've got an um, Asus Swift screen. Do you guys um, stock that as well? Yes, we do stock them. Uh, we actually have them on display around the corner here. So if you want to go check them out. We've got nice PCs built up there as well. If the people outside, if they want to get from Terza gear, I mean, for which channels will they need to purchase to get, to get um, um, the products that you're offering? Well, they'd have to go through our resellers, uh, like we're endorsing DC3 this year so <coughs> dc3.co.za okay so it's online yeah, okay online. thank you very much we're gonna have a look at the screens just now as well okay. and um yeah thanks a bunch i have a nice expo <laughs> besides the exhibitions on display there were a few visitors that threw the inhibitions away a handful of enthusiastic people dressed up as characters from their favorite games comics movies and anime let's see what we have here The show kinda died down after Team Rocket stole all the Pokemon, so we decided to have a chat with the announcer to confirm our suspicions if he was a sleeper agent for Buffles and Dane Bartoli. Turns out he wasn't. Probably. We've got Gareth Woods here, and he's besides the Master of Ceremonies, he's also Master of All Trades. You've been doing the gaming thing quite a while now, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I've been a gamer since, geez, I can remember. Like, mm. even before that, probably. And yeah, yeah, look, it's been awesome to be involved as part of EGE. Uh, been involved in 
the kind of the social media and the press and all that sort of stuff, but also next door with the CSGO, I'm doing the stage hosting kind of emceeing job, yeah. Okay, and um, with the competition that's heating up at the moment, um, you've got any um, hopefuls that you're looking forward to, or are you going to stay unbiased? I should stay unbiased, but I suppose uh, the favorites for the tournament are BVD, Bravado Gaming. Mm -hmm. I would say, look, it's good for eSports for someone else to beat them, but uh, they certainly are the guys who put in the most work to be there. So it's a, it's a case of do the most deserving people uh, need to win or is it uh, you want the underdog to win? So I'm, I'm kind of torn to be honest. Well, we'll see when they play. The best player will win or the best team will win. Yeah, and um, and the, I pretty sure the spectators will be um, entertained by it as well. Well, thank you very much for your time. Um, enjoy the rest of the expo and the competition. And um, yeah, have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. That was Gareth Woods. We're going to go check out the competition now and let's see how the um, teams are going against each other. That was a few rounds of the semi-finals. The winner of the tournament turned out to be Bravado Gaming. So if BVD won, then it means... You're a wizard, Gareth.